Greetings and welcome to an LGR thing, and this thing is the IBM Model 8590, or the PS2 Model 90 XP 486, which was IBM's first system built from the ground up around the 486 CPU. Announced in October of 1990 and costing anywhere from $12,500 on the low end to $17,000 or more, fully equipped. Seriously. At the time of recording this, that is the equivalent of paying $23,000 to $31,000 all for a computer running a 33 MHz 486. And sure, all 486 PCs were costly in 1990, but the Model 90 from IBM here was at the very high end. For example, for $57.99 you could buy a complete PC from Northgate with the same 33 MHz 486 as the $17,000 PS2, which didn't even come with a monitor by the way. It was another $1,000 for the IBM 8515 you see here. So what gives? What kind of person was the Model 90 built for, and why was it so ridiculously expensive when competitors might cost a third of the price? Well, let's take a look at what it comes with and see if we can make some sense of it. And of course we gotta go over some specs, starting with the CPU, which was either a 25 or 33 MHz 486, and it came in the SX or DX varieties. Now, this one in particular has a 66 MHz 486 DX2 from around 1993 installed. It also came with 4 megabytes of DRAM standard, up to a maximum of 64 megabytes, and my particular unit was configured with 32 megabytes, which is still an insane amount for 1990. Integrated into the motherboard are a PS2 keyboard and mouse port, and yes, this line of machines is why they are called PS2 ports, as well as two serial ports, one parallel port, and one XGA video port. XGA is the Extended Graphics Array, a backwards compatible upgrade to VGA, equipped with 512K of RAM and supporting up to 1024 by 768 resolution at 16 colors. And of course mine has been upgraded, this one with a dedicated XGA2 card, complete with a full megabyte of memory, an upgrade that cost $1500, and it allowed it to have the full resolution at 256 colors at once. In the quite attractive front of the case, there is an oddly standard 3.5 inch 1.44 meg floppy disk drive and a 5.25 inch drive bay which could be filled with either a floppy drive or this single speed CD-ROM. Cutting edge stuff, and it added another $1,250 to the price. For peripherals, you got the classic PS2 mouse with its amusingly satisfying yet mushy buttons, and the even more classic Model M keyboard, which is just as wonderful to use today as it was when it launched 33 years ago. A SCSI interface was provided as well, which controlled a 3.5 inch half height hard disk with 80, 160, or 320 megabyte capacities. Mine has once again been upgraded to the 1 gig drive, which was indeed an option at the time. This one obviously is a later drive, but if it had been done in late 1990, it would have been around $2,500. Installed on the disk was IBM PC DOS 5.0, as well as the optional Microsoft Windows 3.0. Of course it would be quite appropriate to put OS 2 on here, being that this is the PS2, but I find 3 oddly charming, so I like it this way. There were also 4 expansion slots inside of the case, and nope, that is not PCI or ISA you're seeing. This is one of the PS2s that used the 32-bit microchannel architecture, or MCA. Not only was MCA more expensive, of course, but it was also completely proprietary to IBM. And that was very much intentional. With their earlier PCs, IBM largely used off-the-shelf components like Intel processors and Microsoft operating systems, stuff that was available to anyone, so this meant that manufacturers like Compaq could come along and clone the PC BIOS and its internal bus architecture to make their own PCs for less money, leading to IBM quickly losing its grip, and they weren't having it. So not only did they release their own operating system, the aforementioned OS2, but they made a new proprietary 32-bit architecture that it could run on, Microchannel. 
This is a super abbreviated version of the story, of course, and the entire MCA vs. Issa battle is one that is well worth a dedicated video of its own, but the gist of it is that MCA was a bid by IBM to try and take back control of the PC ecosystem by force in pretty much the most heavy-handed, cynical IBM way possible, which was to uninvite everyone else from the 32-bit PC party. Unless you paid IBM for the pleasure. And not many people did. You're gonna PS to it. The solution is IBM. Unfortunately, that also means that MCA cards are tough to find, especially for things like sound cards. So I stick to using external devices like the OPL2 LPT for ad lib support if I want anything beyond the PC speaker. Another proprietary thing in here is that the MCA bus logic, CPU, and related circuitry are installed in what IBM called the processor complex. This was a single board that could be upgraded or swapped out entirely as tech improved. After all, the Model 90 XP was also built with future proofing in mind, with the XP in the name standing for Expandable Processor. Not only was it ready for the upcoming 50 MHz 486, but you could install a 256K RAM cache daughter board to the complex for just $2,000. The problem with all of this, though, is that its high price simply wasn't justified by the performance. Compared to other systems with similar specs, the Model 90 XP and other PS2 machines simply held their own without really pushing well beyond the competition. Sure, it would have been mind-bogglingly quick for a home computer, but the 90 XP was never meant for that. IBM sold machines like the PS2 Model 30 and the PS1 Color System for home users, and those had much more reasonable specs and price tags to match. But the Model 90, no. That instead was meant for professionals and businesses and people that needed workstation performance for things like CAD work and financial modeling. You know, nothing fun like Commander Keen, boring IBM stuff. So keeping those particular uses in mind, as well as all of the ridiculous amounts of cutting edge tech in here, the price actually wasn't that exorbitant. It was just, this was expensive tech and coming from IBM, it was gonna cost even more. And it could do so many different things for so many different types of users. For example, it could also act as a capable server machine, which is even more apparent with the closely related Model 95 series. And you thought the 90 XP was expensive. This big beast is on another level. But that'll have to wait for another day. And for now, I hope you enjoyed this look back at the PS2 Model 90 XP 486. If anything, it cracks me up to have a computer that cost nearly as much as three 1991 base model Honda Civics. And I'm just sitting here using it to play ski free. And if you enjoyed this video on the IBM PS2 Model 90, then perhaps you would like to see some of my other PS2 related videos, or any number of other retro hardware and software and tech things that I cover here on LGR. New videos every Monday and Friday. And as always, thank you very much for watching.